1940, German airborne forces would make the world sit up and take notice. During Adolf Hitler's lightning strike across Europe, paratroopers and gliders were used to capture key strategic targets, like the Belgian fort of Ebene Mau. About 70 soldiers went in to take out Ebene Mau. This airborne strike force stunned the 1,200-strong garrison into surrender. It was superbly done, and everybody was impressed. The idea is to surprise the other guy. And when airborne troops were first introduced, they really did surprise the other guy. President Roosevelt, for his part, asked the War Department, can we do this? How come they're doing it and we don't have any forces like this? The U.S. military react quickly and form the first American parachute platoon. The Americans in 1940 started very modestly. We had a test platoon of 50 soldiers. Those parachute boys look as if they mean business. If they don't know how now, they soon will. All aboard. At Fort Benning, Georgia, America's first paratroopers were led by a visionary who saw the deadly potential of this new type of warfare, Major General William Lee. Lee's early role as an architect of the American airborne effort has led to his being called the father of the airborne. By the time America entered World War II, two airborne divisions had been trained. The 82nd, known as the All-American, and 101st, or Screaming Eagles. We were told that we were going to be the best, we were trained to be the best, and we were the best. We would go from 6 in the morning till 8 at night, 6 and 7 days a week. So the training was very rigorous, and those that didn't make it were busted out. As soon as the paratroopers got their boots on the ground, they needed the deadliest weapons they could get their hands on. One weapon would prove to be the perfect match. It's a loud weapon, it's devastating, and it'll take down anything that it shoots at. It has a psychological effect on the enemy when they see that coming. The United States Airborne swoop on their enemies from above, striking from the skies. Once they hit the ground, they have to boss the battlefield, despite the odds being stacked against them. Unlike conventional ground troops, backed up by heavy armor and supply lines, the airborne are highly vulnerable to counterattack. They have to use lightweight weapons with a portable punch, or whatever they can get their hands on in the battlefield. This was the challenge faced by the men of the 101st Airborne Division in December 1944 when the might of the German army rushed the American lines during the Battle of the Bulge. There was a very important crossroads town called Bastogne. A lot of roads ran into it. The 101st Airborne Division was put in around that town, and they became completely surrounded by the Germans. Three German divisions laid siege against the Screaming Eagles of the 101st Airborne Division. One of the advantages a paratrooper always has is he always begins his battle surrounded by the enemy. So when they got there, this was no more different than jumping into D-Day or jumping into Holland in that make it happen attitude. You're not gonna beat me. The surrounded men formed a tight defensive perimeter. At its center, one weapon with serious stopping power, the 50 caliber machine gun. The Browning 50 caliber machine gun, the Ma Deuce, the most legendary gun in the U.S. arsenal. Originally designed to kill tanks in World War I, this weapon can kill anything that's in front of it. During this crucial fight in the Battle of the Bulge, the American defenders of Bastogne would get their hands on the 50 cal whatever way they could. In Bastogne, the 101st had uh, organic to it, an anti-aircraft outfit and they had the 50 caliber machine guns to knock down German aircrafts. But you can dismount those things and use them in a ground mount version, and they did. The other thing they did was to salvage every 50 caliber gun that they could get their hands on from knocked out uh, vehicles, and they used those also. 
The 50 Cal, otherwise known as the Ma Deuce, has enormous killing power. It has seen service through the bloody battlefields of World War II, into the jungles of Vietnam, and on into Iraq and Afghanistan. The firepower of the 50 Cal was matched by the American defenders resolve not to give in at Bastogne. Despite being heavily outnumbered, when asked to surrender by the Germans, the Americans' commanding officer, General McCullough, sent back a reply, which was to become a definitive part of airborne history. General McCullough's reply was very simple, nuts. And the German officer walked away with that. I'm sure it surprised him. Four days later, the airborne were relieved. The awesome firepower of the 50 Cal had played an essential part in holding their line. That and the airborne's never surrender attitude.